Yeah, so Lord God, cover me with the blood of Jesus as I share your word. Let the anointing flow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you give me my eyeglass? Yeah, okay. Welcome, everybody. Okay, so thank you for coming today. I just want you to... Uh, only this one. I just want you to know that uh, we are still in the month of uh, Pentecost, okay? So June is a month of Pentecost. So I'm going to share part two about being filled with the Holy Spirit because I've shared it to you last Sunday, okay? And some, most of you spoke in tongues last Sunday for the first time, okay? And I never even touched some of you, I never even touched, and then you just lay, uh, because it's really the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? So, what I'm going to share to you today, that if you don't speak in tongues, okay, there is no inferior Christian. It doesn't mean that you are less special. No, it's not the point. The point is, God loves us all, okay? And we are equal in the sight of God, but there is an advantage, if you are going to adopt this kind of gift that God is giving to us. Because in fact, I already told you last, last Sunday, okay, that uh, in, in uh, uh, John chapter 16, verse 7, okay, but I tell you the truth, it is for your good or advantage that I am going away. Okay, unless I go away, this is Jesus' word, okay, the counselor or comforter, helper will not come to you, but if I go away, if I go, I will send them to you. So it is for your advantage. Okay, so there is an advantage, okay, if you are going to, to embrace this gift that God is giving to us because this is Jesus. It's not really our own word, okay? There is an advantage. So God, I already like shared it to you last Sunday as well, that it's just like a father who, who stayed in the Philippines and uh, they are not really doing well financially there. And then the father said that uh, I'm going to work abroad so that I can give you good future. You can have better food. You can have better place and you can study in the best in you, uh, a school in, in our in our town, but when the when the father went abroad, the children never took advantage of that. They never go to uh, Western Union to the bank to withdraw the money. And it is exactly the same. If you are not going to take advantage of this, okay, there is no power because it's only in Acts chapter one verse eight, okay, that the Holy Spirit will give you power, okay? So when the Holy Spirit will give you power, that's the time that you will become witness, okay? In Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and in all the end of the world. So God even told them, God even told the disciples, don't go anywhere, don't do anything, okay? Where is it now? In, uh, where is it now? In uh, First Corinthians, okay? Chapter, that's, that's the one that, Okay, that don't go anywhere, don't do anything, okay? In Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 5, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, because John baptized with a repentance, but in a few days, Okay, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So God instructed his disciple that don't do anything. Don't go anywhere. Wait for the promise, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the, the disciple waited, okay, for 50 days. After that, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the evidence when they started speaking in tongues. Okay, so it is not... It, it divided churches, okay? I grew up in Alliance Church, okay? And we don't really deny the Holy Spirit, but we don't also pursue the Holy Spirit. But God said we need to pursue Him. We need to be, this is a time for us to be greedy because if God told them before, don't do anything in the ministry, don't do something uh, for yourself, don't buy a house, don't, don't uh, uh, get married, you need, to, you need to listen to the Holy Spirit first. So that means how much more with our situation now that the world is getting darker and darker, okay? So it is very important for us to know that there is power available for us in order for us to win in this season in our life. Because in fact, okay, I just want to, to, to read it to you in, 
in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 19. Be very careful then how you live, okay? We need to be very careful then how you live. Okay, Ephesians 5, 15 to 19, but I will just read this verse 15 to 16. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Okay, have you noticed it? The days are evil, but the Lord spoke to them. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Okay, so today you will see it in the news that Everything is, is not really doing well, okay? But the good news is God promised us that he gave us the Holy Spirit, okay? And you ask me, how to do that, Pastor? How to, how to live a victorious life? Because in fact, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, that God created us according to his image, and God said to us, be blessed and multiply, okay? Subdue the enemy, have dominion over the fish of the sea, of the of the. Uh, what's that creeping things that crawl on the ground and in fact have dominion even the birds of the sky so god gave us already dominion it is already our our hours okay but there is a principle behind that so the power of the holy spirit is the one who can thrust us to the next level okay and the evidence of this is speaking in tongues because this is what really i i believe that uh, the holy like how to do that okay the word of God in John chapter 1, okay, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God, okay? He was with God from the beginning, and so this is Jesus. And in, 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 in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the word, okay? But when you read it in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, okay? When you read it in Acts chapter 10, verse 28, it said that here that you know Jesus of Nazareth, how, good, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit. So God, remember I told you last Sunday that Jesus never did a miracle when he was 13 years old, 12 years old, 28 years old, 29 years old. The, the, the moment that the Holy Spirit has come upon him, then he suddenly uh, was that become a different person. Okay, Because when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, will you become a different person. So how God anointed him, this is Jesus, with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good, okay, and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So Jesus is the word of God, okay? And he never did any miracle before that, before the time that the Holy Spirit never rests on him. After the baptism, during the baptism of, the, of, of John, the Holy Spirit came to him. So this is Jesus with full of power of the Holy Spirit and he did miracle. And if you compare it to the rabbi during the time of Jesus, the religious people, the same, they have the word. Because remember the word, okay? But they never did any miracle at all. They never really impacted the people. It's all about rituals. It's all about uh, doing religious obligation. And in fact, they have the word. Because they, or most of them, Pastor Kim knows it, they literally memorize the Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They master the law. But because there is no power of the Holy Spirit, when Jesus came, the Word of God came with the power of the Holy Spirit, because that it must be partnered together, then they got offended, okay? They get jealous with Jesus, and in fact, they killed Jesus. So if we are not going to balance as well, if we are not going to, to embrace, we, some of us, okay, because I, I came from, the, from, the, from Alliance Church, okay, we embrace the Word of God, okay, we love the Word of God. If you, if you see this, this, this uh, uh, Baptist, all these things, they, they know more about the Word of God, actually. They are very expert with the Word of God. They embrace, but the problem with that, they never embrace the power of the Holy Spirit because they thought that it's not anymore needed, the speaking in tongues. But the Pentecostal as well, they embrace the power of the Holy Spirit. They embrace the miracles. They embrace the, the, the supernatural, but they never really embrace the word of God so there is no balance at all.
So we as Christian here, we see kind of people, we need to balance it, okay? We will, we will embrace the word of God is because it's just like if you are not going to do that, okay? It's just like one foot, okay? You cannot go anywhere. You cannot really... Uh, you you can I cannot walk I cannot stand in a long in a long run uh, in a in a long time if I have only one foot okay but if I'm going to balance it with the word of God and balance it with the with the power of the Holy Spirit then there will be no extreme you will not become fanatic at all I hope you understand this one because some people get offended okay uh, because. The, I, I don't know, you never see here, there is chaotic here in Shikaina that some will speak in tongues, there's some will speak in tongues here. No, we are all quite, quite in the, in the proper, how to say that, uh, we are, uh, was that there is order in the house because the Holy Spirit will bring order to the house, but it doesn't mean that we are not going to embrace it. Only we need to balance it, okay? I hope you understand this one. It is very important, it's as equal. The Word of God can bring us stability. The Word of God can, can give us uh, wisdom. We will never be off with the doctrine, okay? The Word of God can, 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 give, can make us rooted in our, in, in our love for God. But the speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit, okay, we, we embrace this gift. It can bring us to supernatural. It's a gateway for supernatural. So we need to balance it, okay, so that we will not go to the extreme at all. It's just like a car, okay? The car has an acceleration and a brake, okay? And if you are not going to, if you go to, to like, like come here to church, if there is no break at all, you put your life in danger, okay? Because I believe the word of God is the break, okay? So that you will not go beyond the, 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 the you will not go beyond what Jesus said, you need to be grounded with the word of God. But the accelerator is the Holy Spirit, because we need also to be sensitive what the Holy Spirit is doing right now. And I believe that we need to embrace this both. I don't want us to be extreme in this side or extreme in this side. We need to have balance as is. I just want to let you know we need to balance it. Love the Word of God. You need to embrace the Word of God. You need to read the Word of God. I went to the party yesterday and there is four years old boy and and the mother said, okay, uh, you tell Ninang to, to memorize Psalms, Psalms 23, and he memorized Psalms 23. He said he started it when he was three years old, and he memorized it. He just gave it to me, the, 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 like, like I just listened, I was so amazed. You know why? He's teaching their children, her, his, her child, to embrace the Word of God, and they are also embracing the Holy Spirit. And we as Christians, in order for us to move to the next level, in order for us to receive the, the power, the breakthrough that God is promising us that we will never be swayed because this is an evil, uh, the, the world is getting darker, okay? You, if you see the, the gas, how, how much is that now? Everything is expensive, but you know what? If you know the word of God, you said, my God shall supply all my needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus, okay? And if you know that you have the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I will never be moved. I will never be swayed, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding me, for thank you, Holy Spirit, for protecting me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give me wisdom because the Holy Spirit is our helper. And if you're going to keep on speaking in tongues, because I really believe that the reason why I'm here in front of you today, I, could, I keep on speaking in tongues before in our house because I don't work at all and I get bored sometimes. I think I just need to speak in tongues. So I keep on speaking in tongues and I have this revelation from the Lord and I have this wisdom from the Lord. I don't even know. And do you know that I don't even know how to speak English? I can speak English, but not that really, like, I don't know. And every time Pastor Craig will talk to me, I was like, I, it seems like I don't, the more I don't know how to speak English. But when I started, I don't even know how to pray before. I, I'm so afraid to pray because I don't know how to speak English. That's the reason, actually. But when I started speaking in tongues, there is an extraordinary boldness that has come to me. Because it is the gateway for supernatural. The moment you embrace this gift, your life will never be the same anymore. And why not take advantage of this? Because there's always an advantage when you, when you speak in tongues. I hope you understand this one. And you know what? In 2 Timothy, verse 1 to 7, God does not give you the spirit of fear, 
but the spirit of power and love and a sound mind. What does it mean with this? God does not give you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. This is what I believe. That when you speak in tongues, okay, the more that you will be in love with Jesus. The more you speak in tongues, the more that your desire is to be in his presence. I don't know why. This is really what my experience in life. The more you speak in tongues, okay, God will give you sound mind, means disciplined mind. So don't just like, okay, I'm speaking in tongues now. I'm not ordinary anymore, and you look down to other people. That is not the true walk with God. Because in speaking in tongues, okay, God will give you love that you've never experienced before. Okay, remember that speaking in tongues is a perfect prayer. Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, that when you pray uh, to, okay, that when you pray, when you speak in tongues, you are going to pray. It's a perfect prayer because it's a prayer is a mystery. You know why? Because you are doing it from spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit, because we are... We live in the body, we have a soul, and we are a spirit. Okay, you are not a body, you are not a soul, you are a spirit. You live in the body and you have a soul. So when you pray, when you, when you speak in tongues, praying is a spirit to spirit uh, interaction, okay? Because the things that you feed more is that the one that will, that will grow more, okay? And if you feed your spirit, the more your spirit will be stronger because the moment you can win it in the spirit, you can win it in the natural. Okay, the moment you can win it in the spirit, you can win it in the natural. So we need to embrace that one because it's the Holy Spirit who will give us an extraordinary love as all. I don't believe that you keep on speaking in tongues and you are rude, you are not a loving person. You become a loving person, we keep on speaking in tongues. This is what really I believe because you will be feeding your spirit because remember in in Second Corinthians, in, in First Corinthians, okay, chapter uh, fourteen, okay, verse four, okay. He who speak in tongues edifies himself. Okay, so he who speak in tongues edifies himself. So when we keep on speaking in tongues, we are edifying ourselves. We are edifying our spirit. We are, we are strengthening our spirit. We are strengthening our core, which is the Holy Spirit that is upon us. So the moment you do that, you are edifying, you are feeding your spirit. Okay? You are edifying yourself. In fact, uh, this morning I woke up, it was so painful. I have this back pain for almost a month now. And you know what? I just like lay hands today. I said, Lord, I can I don't know if I can do that in church today, but I just like Lord, you said, Lord God, if I speak in tongues, you edify my heart. Are you edify me? So God, this is also me. My body is is is, is me, Lord God. So God shakara baba baba. You know what? My husband told me you take the panadol, you take something that pain pain reliever. I said, No, I'm going, I'm healed right now because I claim it that as I spoke in tongues this morning, it is already healed. And you know what I exercise first time for how many how many weeks I've never exercised in my normal exercise and I exercise this morning is because I use the power of the Holy Spirit I hope you understand this one and you know what if you are going to really uh, as, uh, really like embrace this one okay you are he said that be filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? Be filled with the Holy Spirit means that when you, when you are going to, you said that, oh, Pastora, I already did it last time, Pastora, and after that, you, do, you are not going to do it anymore. But you know what? It is not really, it is, you can be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you can lose it, okay? So you need to be filled again and again and again and again. Just like the way you have your own car, okay? So this one in Acts chapter 431, after they prayed, okay? And know, where is it? First Corinthians, uh, where is it now? Uh, hold on, power when the Spirit will come to you. That he said that you are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 18, do not, uh, 15 to 18, do not get drunk with wine, with cost, with, with leads to rebellion. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do not get drunk in wine, which leads to rebellion. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean? Keep on filling. It's a continuous verb. 
okay? If you're going, if you already started speaking in tongues, keep on exercising it because it's only one Holy Spirit, but a lot of infilling. It's a progressive, it's an it's a infilling every day, okay? And it's free flow of wine here in, in this church. It's free, free flow. Every time I go to Walmart, I speak in tongues. I go to Superstore, I keep in speaking in tongues. I go to the doctor waiting for, the, for my name to be called. I also speak in tongues because it's free flow. Be filled always. It's continuous, okay? Because it's just like when we went to, a few years ago, we went to, to Edmonton with my husband. We have a conference there in Victoria as well. And then, uh, we are not really familiar in Edmonton, okay? So my husband, I said, okay, there's a gasoline station before we leave because we left there, I think, about 10 o'clock in the, after 10 o'clock in the, in the evening because we, we need to go home. And then, my husband, maybe later we will, we will, there is another gasoline station in the other, in the other side, but immediately we went to the super highway. So we never have a chance to put gas in our car, and I didn't know that there is no gas uh, station from the, from Edmonton uh, city to how many, how many kilometers, and our car already keep on having uh, an alarm. You know the alarm? Ting, 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 ting. I said, oh God, and it's already, I think, one o'clock or something like that in the morning, and it was also winter, and I I was crying already and then I told my husband we need to stop or else we can we cannot we stop in the highway so we went we look for another a uh, place and then we went there we call AMA okay because there's no more gas already and when we called the AMA the AMA said oh so many people are calling us we can rescue you after eight o'clock in the morning so I said what what we do we don't have any proper clothes inside the car okay and we just like, oh, Lord, help us pray. We prayed, and then suddenly my husband said, I think I, I, can, I can check the GPS if there is a new, a near uh, gas, gas station here. And then we prayed, check, it's just two minutes drive from our place. I said, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. You know what? How to apply it in our own life. Sometimes we go on in life, and we didn't realize we don't have gas anymore because the Holy Spirit is power. And no wonder we are defeated. No wonder we don't live a life that God intended us to live. No wonder that we are not happy. So many Christians who are grumpy, so many Christians who are defeated, so many Christians who are, you know, like, don't disturb me, I'm a Christian, you know? <laughs> like some auntie that I have, don't disturb me, okay? I'm a Christian, I'm praying here, don't disturb me, I'm praying here, okay? So, but if you want to live a victorious life, you need to be filled every day. Keep on speaking in tongues every day. I never say that you are not going to pray the normal prayer. In fact, Pastor Craig, their church is growing. I think there are more than 800 people now is coming to their church. And he mentioned me during the conference, you know, I, I'm speaking in tongues more than my natural prayer. I said, wow, that's what he said. Like Paul, Paul said that I speak in tongues more than all of you here. So there is power because I see the result of the churches. When Pastor Craig told me, Dina, did you tell the people about speaking in tongues? I said, not yet, Pastor. During the time that the churches was, that this chicane is new. And then Pastor Craig told me, I want you to tell the people about that. It's because I've observed this these uh, churches who never embrace the speaking in tongues, their church is dry and the, there is no growth at all. There's growth, but it's in number, but there is no growth in the depthness. There's no growth in, in, the, in, the, in their walk with God. I said, if Pastor Craig do that, then we need also to embrace that one because I see it's working into his life. And I see it's working into Paul's life. I see it's working into the disciples' life. I hope you understand this one. And you ask me how to do that, okay, again. Okay, this is what I'm going to, 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 to tell it to you, okay? Because we have not enough time anymore. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 19, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. What's the Lord's will is? Okay? I, I meditated this morning. What's the Lord's will is? Do not be drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Okay? Leads to the rebellion. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. 
And then he said, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. So making, okay, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. I said, Lord, what do you mean by this? I thought this is just Christian song. No, this one is singing in the Spirit. This is what it means. I said, is there any verse, Lord God, that can, can that can, uh, uh, what's that, uh, uh, back me up with this, okay? And the Lord lead me in Acts, okay? Uh, what's that, in Acts chapter, or is it that, that, I, that I read, okay? No, in, in 1 Corinthians, okay, chapter 14, the summer, the verse 15. So what shall I do? This is Paul, okay? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding, so this is speaking in tongues and understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. So this is what Paul said. He wrote most of the New Testament. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I also sing with my understanding. Wow. So that means that Paul is not saying that don't pray with your understanding, but he said you also pray with the, with the spirit and you also pray with understanding because the, the, the prayer of the, uh, the speaking in tongues is perfect prayer, okay? And you also sing with your understanding and you also sing with the spirit. This is not me who wrote it. It's a Bible. It's Paul, okay? So that means that in order for us to live a life that is full of power, that is full of, 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 of love of God, then we need to do both. This is not me. This is the word of God. Okay, we need to do both. The more we need it now rather than before, because before it's not yet the last, last, last days. Now is the last, last, last days. Okay? I met Carlos yesterday, and Carlos said, Atidina, we just be, uh, uh, it's getting darker now in the world. They, they, they have, they, there is some, some group of people, they want a one world government now, and it's already happening behind the closed door, okay? And they are not even hiding it, so that you can Google it. But there's one more revival that will come before Jesus will come. I said, Carlos, do you think Jesus is coming soon? It could be. But we need the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Because they even right said that it's drink like wine. You know, this is what really like amazed me. He said that, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. What is the Lord's will is? This is one, do not be drunk on wine, which lead to, to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking in one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And I said, Lord, what do you mean by that? He paralleled it with wine. You know what? Because... The wine can make your heart warm. The wine can make you glad. The wine can make you a different person. Have you noticed it? The wine can make you see things that you never even say. There is no more filter. You know, if you are drunk with wine, okay, and those people maybe experience this as well, okay, you are a different person. You will, in the Philippines, if they said, okay, I just have a lot of cousins there, if there's, they want this person to confess the truth, they want to make this person drunk first. And then after that, no more filter, he will say the truth, okay? And that is exactly what will happen to us because Paul parallel it with the speaking in tongues and drinking wine. You become drunk in the spirit. You know what? I've experienced it in Southside before that this person drunk in the spirit, he just literally like, the, the, the speaker like very drunk, that he just even, and then when he, he's, with this person, she's a lady actually, the, 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 the smell of her mouth is also wine, it's supernatural. And she was so drunk, she kept on laughing, okay? So when you are drunk, the joy of the Lord will overflow into your heart. Because the wine can make you a different person. You will walk differently. How do you walk when you are drunk, okay? When you are filled with the Spirit, you walk differently. You talk differently, okay? You are going to be a different person and in fact, boldness will come to you okay you will see things you know what you will see things that is not even in your in your vocabulary have you noticed it because there is, you will be out of control and you are when you are filled with the holy spirit you will be out of control you are controlled by the holy spirit like the way the substance control you when you are high with with substance okay there is not anymore you but when you are filled with the holy spirit the holy spirit will control you you are uncontrollable 
Nobody can control you anymore because you are drunk. And this is what God wants us to do in this season. That we need to be in control. We need to be, to be possessed by the Holy Spirit, not with wine. So that we, as children of the King, children of God, can have power. And the moment you are fully filled, okay, we are, you are filled with the Holy Spirit in your life, your life will full of the glory of the Lord. This is what really I believe. The glory of the Lord will rest upon you. And in fact, people will ask you, what's your secret? I have a lot of friends, okay, not really. Like, they will ask me, what's your secret? Why are you always happy? Why every, every time you are, you are near to me, Dina, they said, why I feel so good? And I said, I don't know, but I think because I keep on speaking in tongues. It helps me really. I, it's unexplainable, but it's happening into our life. And we need to embrace it because it's free in a way. You don't need to pay for it. God gave us free flow of the Holy Spirit here. God gave us free flow of wine because imagine that if you are drunk with, a, with, with wine, a natural wine, it's exactly what happened also when you are drunk in the Spirit. Okay? In fact, I, I, I just wrote it here, you know, you know, in Proverbs, okay, chapter 23, verse 35. This is a drunk card, okay. They hit me, they, they hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. This is in Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 35. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? This is a drunk card, okay. They hit me, but I cannot feel it. They, they insult me, but I cannot feel it. You know what? If you are filled with wine, if you are full of, of the Holy Spirit, even people will insult you, you will not get hurt. Even if people will, will backbite you, you will still love them. Because if you are drunk, you don't feel anything. Okay, even if the people will, will say, will, 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 will like ruin your reputation, you don't care anymore. Like a drunk person, okay? You don't care anymore. I have a neighbor there in the Philippines, his wife left him and then he become a drunkard and very many nights that he will just, because he was so drunk, he will just sleep in the, in the, in the side of the road, okay? With all the mosquitoes and cold and hot there. And you know what? He doesn't feel it because he was drunk. And you know what? When you are drunk, you don't feel the pain of, of persecution. When you are drunk, you don't be afraid. You become so bold. You are not anymore afraid what other people think about you because you are drunk in a way. And this is what God wants us to do. We will never be affected what's going on around the world because you are possessed by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you and the Holy Spirit will, 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 will help you in every step of the way. Do you know when we started Shekinah, People get angry. Some people, the Filipino people, get angry with us, with the core cool group as well, because they are not happy. But you know what? I didn't care. And I didn't know, Lord, why? It seems that I don't really, it's not a big deal for me. And I just realized it is because I keep on speaking in tongues. Because when you are full of the Holy Spirit, you don't care anymore what other people think. You just obey God because your, your heart's desire is to please the King of Kings. Your heart's desire is to, is to please the, the, the living God of Israel. Okay, I hope you are blessed this one because I really want us to understand this one that the, the way even, even the, the time that people get uh, was that when they received the Holy Spirit in the upper room, okay, the 120 people, they spoke in tongues, okay? And they just keep on speaking in tongues the whole 120. And what did the people say? Oh, these people are drunk. Because it's a manifestation of being, you are, you are drunk, okay? And we just want to be drunk today, the Holy Spirit. Free flow of wine in this place right now. Drink the Holy Spirit, okay? And how you drink it? By faith. There is Charlie Robinson there that went to Southside before. Every time he will go there, you understand these people. Okay, now we are going to be drunk today. So then he just, okay, get the barrel now. Get your big cup. And then said, okay, we do it by faith. And then they will do that. Okay, drink. Everybody will drink. Ah! And we keep on drinking. And then people started to be drunk, literally. People started to keep on laughing and people will just get out from their, from their chairs and run, 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 keep on running. And then it's a chaotic place, but it's really the Holy Spirit. That is what happened during the time in Acts. 
chapter 2 that the people said these people are drunk but Peter said no they are not drunk we are it's still 9 o'clock in the morning and you know what I want to do it here in this church that we God will just do something funny to us okay that we just laugh this morning I laugh a lot as well you know what I said ha I laugh with my faith ha 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 I just like, I just want to laugh until I laugh this morning. I talk about my children like, oh, ah. <laughs> and I did it by faith. Everything we do it by faith. You drink it by faith. You drink the word of God. You drink the Holy Spirit because it's like a wine. So then the God, I want to be drunk with your wine, with your wine, Lord God, because the Holy Spirit is a wine as well. So I keep on drinking the wine. Do it by faith. You know why? Without your faith, you cannot even please God. We need to do it by faith. And if you want to be in feeling of the Holy Spirit right now, I want you to stand. I hope you are blessed with that. Because actually, I have a very seven, seven pages of, 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 of uh, what's that, uh, message, but we don't have enough time anymore. Because you know why? I really want us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Keep on feeling the Holy Spirit. Do not, we cannot be, don't be so conscious that we will make a mistake. You know why? Of course, many times we will make a mistake. Okay, I could, I could make a mistake here as well. But you know what? It's better for us to make a mistake trying to pursue the Holy Spirit rather than not at all. Because everything we do, we do it by faith. Okay, we do it by faith. And if you are going to just embrace the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will embrace you. You will never be the same anymore. You walk differently. You talk differently. You think differently. And in fact, you will do things that you've never done before. Because when you are drunk with the Holy Spirit, you will do. There is boldness that will come unto you that you've never. This is a woman. The, my family was so shocked when I started preaching. My pastor in Singapore was so shocked when I started preaching. I even myself was so shocked. I've never preached back in Singapore. I've never did anything. I started preaching when I started, when I started the Bible study when I started speaking in tongues. In, in Singapore, our church, they embraced the speaking in tongues, but they never encouraged to the congregation. But when Pastor Craig encouraged it to the congregation, they spoke in tongues there. I started to embrace it since 2009. And the moment I started it, I have this kind of boldness. Because when you are drunk, the number one thing that you can experience that you have no shame anymore. You are bold. And you will not be politically correct anymore. We, you don't rock the boat anymore. People say, don't rock the boat, okay? Don't say anything because you might hurt other people, but when you are drunk, you don't care anymore. When you are drunk, you don't feel the pain anymore. When you are drunk, you don't feel the insult anymore. You are a different person, and today we want to be drunk with the Holy Spirit. Okay, if you want to accept the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want you to come here. We do it by faith. You know, it's time for us to go to the next level. Okay, because it really, it really helps me, you know. Come here. Come here. Last Sunday, most of you here came, received the power of the Holy Spirit.